I ain't gonna lie to you, so I'm gonna have to say, what are you take notes on it? What did you do with it? I ain't got notes on it. Do you really wanna know how to spot a liar? Forget everything you thought you knew about detecting deception. In this video, I'm gonna show you a short clip of an interview I conducted on an armed robbery suspect. Now first, watch the video and let me know in the comment section if you think he's lying or not. And if so, tell me what signs you see. We'll then rewatch it and I'll point out all of the signs to you. Now I need you to stay with me to the end because this is where I'm gonna break the interview down step by step so that you can learn how to read deception better. This suspect is accused of approaching a complete stranger, pointing a gun at him and robbing him of his chain. That wallet back. Good. You understand what I'm saying? Um, so that's what I'm asking for. Uh, I need that kid's law chain back. That's what I'm asking for right now. Where can I get that chain? I ain't gonna lie to you, so I don't know what I'm What are you taking notes on it? What did you do with it? I ain't got no chain. We have a third chain. You can't put me on the scene as ticket chain. Have you ever had a chain? I don't got no chain. Or have you ever had a chain? I haven't had a chain. Yeah. No, I don't got no chain. You like watches? Yeah, I can. You ever had a necklace? What you mean by my Like a gold necklace. I have been in necklace. Okay. Sir. Did, did you have a necklace last night? No, sir. Did you have a necklace today? No, sir. No. Ever? I don't got a necklace. No, sir. Okay. I know you don't have one on me now. Absolutely. I never had one in a vehicle, sir. Okay, so you never had a necklace at all. That's what you're saying to me? Not today? Sir. No, sir. You never had yesterday, not the same phone. I don't got a necklace. So what do you think? Is he lying? What signs did you see? Comment below. Before I break it down, let me give you a quick lesson on detecting deception that most companies don't teach. First, we're not detecting deception. That's impossible. I don't care what any companies teach you. What we're actually detecting is stress. The stress that's caused by deception. It's important to know that when you see signs of stress, it doesn't automatically mean somebody's lying to you. It doesn't mean deception. Ask yourself what else causes stress. A job interview can be stressful. Testifying in court, having to explain an accusation to a parent or a boss or even the cops. In all of these circumstances, you might see signs of stress, but it doesn't necessarily mean someone's lying to you. That said, while stress doesn't necessarily mean deception, deception will cause stress. So how do we determine stress versus deception? Well, you can't, not with 100% accuracy, but what you can do is narrow it down by using baseline and clusters. Let's talk about that. Whenever you're speaking with somebody and you're trying to determine lie versus truth, it's very important to know what their baseline is, right? You have to understand, are they naturally uh, introverted? Are they closed off? Do they not look people in the eye when they speak? Do they naturally stutter? Do they sit in a guarded position? Is this their natural behavior? So how do we determine what their natural behavior is, what their baseline is? Well, by having a casual, non-stressful conversation first, right? Where you talk about anything other than the accusation. And this is where we observe their natural body language and we listen to the way that they speak. Then, when we ask the harder questions, now what we're doing is we're looking for the deviation from the baseline and we're looking for clusters. We'll go over clusters here in a few. So first, let's talk about deviation from the baseline. If a person you're speaking with initially had no problems looking you in the eye during the casual conversation, and then they broke eye contact while answering the hard question, that's deviation from the baseline. Does it mean they're lying? Well, it could, or it could mean they're uncomfortable with the question. Clusters help with this, let me explain. Clusters are several signs of stress happening at one time or in succession of each other. For example, let's say a parent asked his son if he stole a pen. If the son replied no, it would be very hard to read. However, if the son said, why would I steal that pen? I mean, we have plenty of pens at school. This would be very easy to read because a lot of things are happening right now. First of all, we have multiple things going on at one time. First, he couldn't answer a simple yes or no question. He answered with a convincer, why would I? We also had a lot of body language things going on here, right? We had the body shift, we had him closing off, maybe crossing his arms a little bit and then using the uh, protective covering. We had about four different signs going on at one time. That's called a cluster. So now that you understand what clusters are, let's go back and watch the video again. Now, before I show the video, let's talk about the big reveal. Is he guilty? Yes. How do we know? Well, not only did he confess to me about the armed robbery, but he agreed to get the chain back for me. As, as a matter of fact, we ended up going to McDonald's where his girlfriend worked. And the reason why we had to go see her is because he actually gave the necklace to her as a gift. He gave a stolen necklace to his girlfriend, but it doesn't stop there. Shortly after he robbed the victim of his chain, he took a picture of himself wearing the chain in the same outfit he committed the robbery in, and then he posted it online on Facebook. I can't make this shit up. So I'm gonna play the first section of the interview. And the very first statement I make to him is I make a request. I say, I need the victim's chain back. 
he's gonna use a convincer. He's gonna say, I ain't gonna lie. A convincer basically is when someone uses a statement trying to convince their innocence. And you're gonna see that, you're gonna hear that. But you're also gonna witness it because he's gonna pat himself down trying to convince me that he doesn't have the chain on him. And you're also gonna see a body shift. Remember, none of these things definitively mean somebody is lying. But when we look at the totality of the interview and the investigation, and of course we weigh out the clusters, it brings us closer to yes than no. Remember, we're not looking for one sign, we're looking for a cluster of sign. I need that kid's law chain back. That's what I'm asking for right now. Where can I get that chain? I ain't gonna lie to you, so I'm gonna have a What are you take no chain? What did you do with it? I ain't got no chain. We have a third chain. So in this part, I'm gonna ask him if he ever had a chain and he's not gonna be able to answer a simple yes or no question. Now understand that sometimes liars can't answer a simple yes or no question. He's also gonna repeat the question and use, this, or use a stalling tactic. I'm gonna say, have you ever had a chain? He's gonna say, have I ever had a chain? You'll see how that goes. That's a stalling tactic when somebody repeats the question. The other thing you'll wanna do when figuring this whole thing out is hit that like and subscribe button. Um, it may not help with the interview, but it's gonna make me feel a lot better. So please just hit that like and subscribe button just right. Hit it. You can't put me on the scene as ticket saying I'm Have you ever had a chain? I don't got no chain. Or have you ever had a chain? I haven't had a chain. Yeah. No, I don't got no chain. You like, why? So in this next section, I'm going to ask him if he ever had a necklace. Liars often act as if they don't understand simple questions. That's a very simple question. And he's going to respond, what do you mean, have I ever had a necklace? It's very simple. Have you ever had a necklace? By the way, if you're getting value out of this video, please check out my interview and interrogation book on Amazon. It's called Extracting the Truth. Yeah, I can you ever had a necklace? What you mean by my name? Like a gold necklace. I have plenty of necklaces. Okay. So coming up, you'll see that I asked him if he had a necklace last night. Now, he had no problem looking at me in the eye during the entire interview. But at this point, when he answers my question, he's going to break eye contact. We call that deviation from the baseline. He's also going to pat himself again, right? Pat himself down again, trying to convince me that his pockets are empty. That's a convincer, right? And then the third thing he's going to do in succession, it's a cluster, he's going to revert into an uninterested position. And the reason why that's important is oftentimes when somebody's being accused of something serious, Serious, they'll try to minimize it themselves by acting like it's no big deal. So you'll see how he kind of just reverts to laying down on the table like this is no big deal. This is a huge deal. This is armed robbery. And in my state, we have 10, 20 life loss if you use a firearm. And in this case, he ended up getting five years in prison. So it's a very, very serious thing. But instead, he tried to minimize the, uh, the, the severity of the crime by acting like it's no big deal. And so those are the clusters that we're talking about. Did, did you have a necklace last night? No, sir. Did you have a necklace today? No, sir. Ever? I don't got a necklace. No, sorry. I know you don't have one on me now. Absolutely. I know that one in the vehicle. So, okay, so you never had a necklace at all. That's what you're saying to me? Not today? No, sir. You never had today? Not the same phone. I don't got a necklace. So now you understand three major concepts. The first one is uh, understanding that you're reading stress and not deception. And just because you see signs of, uh, of, of deception doesn't mean somebody's actually lying to you. It could mean they're lying, right? The thing that we're looking for to, to determine that better, because nothing's done with 100% accuracy, is a deviation from the baseline, which we talked about and we showed it. And of course, we're also talking about clusters, reading things in clusters more than one side at a time. I hope you got value out of this video. If you did, please hit that like and subscribe button. And if you're interested in interview and interrogation strategies, check out my book on Amazon, Extracting the Truth. Um, I need that kid's law chain back. That's what I'm asking for right now. Where can I get that chain? I ain't gonna lie to you, so I know what I'm saying. What are you taking no chain? What did what you do with it? I ain't got no chain. We have a third chain. You can't put me on the scene as ticket saying my chain. Have you ever had a chain? I don't got no chain. Or have you ever had a chain? I haven't had a chain. Yeah, no, I don't got no chain. You like, why? Since the IP, you ever had a necklace? What you mean by my Like a gold necklace. I have plenty of necklaces. Okay. Sir. Did, did you have a necklace last night? No, sir. Did you have a necklace today? No, sir. Ever? I don't got a necklace. No, sir. Okay. I know you don't have one on me now. Absolutely. I know that one in the vehicle. So. Okay. So you never had a necklace at all. That's what you're saying to me? Not today? No, sir. You never had a necklace today? Not the same phone. I don't got a necklace.